Hey friends, it's Stephanie at the Polish Protégé. We're going to do a full garden tour today. I have been very missing in action. I think it's probably been a month since my last post, but I have good reasons why. Okay, so here's what I've been doing. This is London. There's Ava. Ava, can you hold Sydney? These are the kittens that were living under my porch and are now still living on our porch. They love us. Hi. They've been taking up a lot oh, of our time. <laughs> so we've been out on the porch a lot. They've gotten fixed. They're getting comfortable. They're very comfortable with myself, with Ava. We're working on other people. We are socializing them a lot so that if we do um, give them another home, which we might in another month, then they are going to be very socialized. And if not, they're still gonna be socialized because they're gonna live here with us and be garden kitties. And I have to tell you, it's a super, super ton of fun to do walking around gardening and weeding and having little kittens follow me around the yard. So yeah, so that. number two, it's been May. And not only was I subbing and finishing up my class uh, stuff online, I received a job offer for next year and I'm pondering how that's going to work out in our lives next year. My son went to camp and I went with him as a chaperone. We had field days, we had field trips, we had award assemblies, we had graduation. We have had a lot of things <laughs> going on. So I have been full on mom and teacher for this last month. So life has not left me much time for real gardening and or YouTubing about gardening. But here we go. So we're gonna start in the backyard and as unbelievable as this is, uh, it is June 1st and I do not have my whole garden planted because of the aforementioned three things that I talked about. But uh, a lot of things that were perennial are coming back. Some things I planted are doing really well. We'll start over here in this bed over here. This is the big 16 foot bed. In the back right here, I have planted some zinnia seeds, which are coming up right there. My goal is to have flowers in down here and here. I haven't planted very many down here. I'm going to need to. Here are all of my hot peppers for the year, as well as a whole bunch of volunteer snapdragons. Looks like I got a volunteer Cosmo right there. Uh, I've got some nasturtium popping up right there to climb here. And in the back, I've got sunflowers and volunteer zinnias coming up as well. I've also planted beans in this back row. And I don't think, oh, here's one just starting to come up. These are gonna be dried beans that I am going to plant. They are actually this Mayflower bean. They're gonna climb up this trellis and I'm gonna let them dry out and use them for dried chili beans. Look at this volunteer sunflower. She gets to stay. You see how much bigger those are? So this is a sunflower that volunteered. And back there is a the sunflower seed I planted. So if I get a chance to leave these volunteers, I leave them alone. I'll have to come through and cut some of the bottom branches out because I do have some peppers down here. That is okay. Hi girls. Here in the bottom right here, over on the side, I've planted several um, squash seeds to climb up here. Those have not come up yet. And then I've got potatoes in here and I've got two different kinds of potatoes. This huckleberry gold is one. And the other is a purple, whose name I can't remember. And they're actually called microtubers, which I don't know a lot about. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Those are all in here. These are all volunteer calendula, my green onions. And then over here I planted, hey, beans. I planted bush beans in here. And these bush beans are, I don't know what, I forget. Is that terrible? There's a bush bean in here. I guess we'll find out together when it comes up. Over here in the chicken run area, I have got mints she's eating. And I figured mint was a good thing to put in those baskets since she's gonna eat it. That's a mint mix. I have got spearmint, I think, in this one. Uh, I don't remember. I've got more, this is Anna's hyssop. This is another mint right here. This is the lemon mint. So those are all gonna be in containers. It's very important to have your mint in containers. If you don't, it will spread by runners underneath your soil and take over your garden. 
all these crazy things that are bushing out like bonkers and that one up there those are all chamomile and I didn't know they could get this big right here they're in little blocks it's very strange tucked into here I have got some marjoram and some eucalyptus planted however they're kind of getting shaded out this is Anna's hyssop back here in the back these are all great for the pollinators over here this is German chamomile. This is the other chamomile. The one up here and these big ones is all marguerite. So two different kinds. Underneath here, there is a big barrel. And in that I have got right here, these cosmos. They're the Diablo Cosmo. And then I also have some beans that are climbing up this trellis. Those will be fun, right? This is more Anna's hyssop. And those are the chickens. And look, these are volunteer squash that are growing all over back here from the compost pile last year. Back along this far wall, I've just got my ladder collection and I've got a couple pots right here that got some beans in them. Those were just beans that I found outside that survived the winter. And I think they're us, actually a scarlet runner bean. Sorry, my neighbor's mowing the lawn. I could try and wait, but I would never get this done because I've started it about 10 times and never finished it. So we're just gonna keep on rolling. Down here, I planted a whole bunch of sunflowers in between the ladders and then I planted right here I've got one coming up I got some here I got ones coming up right here Ooh, coming up right there I've got squash and things here and I'll go through and find the things I planted there I think it's an Armenian cucumber and I think it's a Long Island cheese pumpkin and the Georgia candy roaster those are all gonna climb up there and hopefully be part of this canopy I also planted over here some more of those North Georgia candy roasters and that center cut squash I did last year. So I'm hoping what's gonna happen, the back up here is all along this side, how some growing up here, the ladders they'll be growing up and they'll all kind of converge and make a beautiful canopy there. That's the dream. This bed over here, I'll start in the back end over here. I got some more. This is the German chamomile again. These are all kales that I planted that are doing phenomenal. These peas over here are doing okay, but not awesome. I guess I'm gonna let them see what happens. I did plant peas in the front row and nothing has happened. Um, those are definitely not gonna work, but the onions that I planted in here are getting nice and big and doing really well. So what I'm gonna do is leave this alone until these peas are done. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with something else, but I'm giving it just a little bit. And then over here on the sides, I planted a couple broccolis and cauliflowers. <laughs> Look at that little baby. Um, and I got one here and here. See how loose those heads are? Can you see that? I am afraid they are gonna go to seed before I ever get a broccoli head because it's been such a strange warm spring, which could happen and there's not much I can do about it. So for now, they look really pretty. That thing in the middle right there is a giant plot of um, sweet um, anise, which the bees love and spreads like crazy. This I've done nothing with. There's nothing in here that I've planted. Over here on the side of the backyard is a mess, and this is just the reality of the first part of the growing season. I have got all of these strawberries all the way down over in the sun. I've got them actually coming up and they're nice and red. Here are my celery over here on the end. Looking good. These are all strawberries in here. And actually look at, see? <laughs> These are the big strawberries and they are looking really, really, really good this year. Intermixed in these, hang on a second. Let me walk around. Intermixed in these, I've got some herbs. There is some chives. Here's some cilantro, there's a parsley, and the ranunculus. These are getting all blown out now, but they're so pretty. And then over here, I did these uh, saw horses to try and grow cucumbers. I've planted my seed twice and have not gotten any to come up yet, here or here. So I think I'm going to try another variety 
if I don't get any more. Yeah, I just see calendula and weeds back there. These are some peas I planted there for now. Um, over here, same thing. I put peas on this trellis for now. The hopes that I get cucumber. I've got some random zinnias and cosmos planted in here. Same thing down here. Some rosemary, some zinnias. And then back here, I've got three Dr. White cheese tomatoes to climb up this corner. And I've got some peas and some Kajari melon planted back there. We'll see if that works this year. Over here in the driveway, there's my handsome son playing baseball. And then right here is the first planter. These peas are actually doing the best. They're pretty tall. Oh, look who we got. The kittens are playing. Just him. <laughs> Hi, London. That's London. He wants to play baseball. That's super cute, Mason. Just don't hit him. He'll be all right. <laughs> London. Okay, sorry, I had to take a kitten break. So these peas are doing really well. They are nice and tall. I believe these are the spring blush pea. I should get peas out of here. Down in the bottom, I have planted uh, cherry tomatoes. So I have got blue boar right here. These ones right here, I think are sun gold. Yep, two sun gold. And this guy right here is a black strawberry. And then I have a bean here on the end that is just a, gonna run up there. Inside the buckets, I've got nasturtium. I think this is it. Yep, single blend, the nasturtium trailing so they should grow up and out of the basket in theory and I also got these really pretty poppies they're super pretty and these are gonna be dahlias showing up right there in this middle section I took all this spinach out oops that's a weed those are some calendula and these are all those micro dwarf tomatoes I told you about remember so We've got these ones right here. I've got these Evitas. And look at, they have baby tomatoes already. This is as big as the plants get. This one's got tomatoes already. And I think this container is actually perfect. I'm gonna fertilize them, give them lots of liquid fertilizer, but they are the perfect size for the smaller, shallower container. I've got sunflowers coming. Ooh, and I got a little bit of nasturtium. It's gonna pop out of here too. That's nice. This is just weed. You need to go. Over here, same thing. Trailing nasturtium in the basket to come over. Peas here, you'll see the peas are much shorter here. They don't get as much sun to stretch, so they're thicker at the bottom. But I've put my tomatoes in here, and these are super sweet 100s for the most part. I have got some sunrise, sunrise bumblebee in here too. And those are doing really well. I don't know why, they just are. And here, this is turned into a strawberry bed. It was not my intention. I just threw a couple in there and this is what happened. So I've got some dianthus on the ends. That one's kind of dying. And then I did plant some zinnias here and here. And I put them in these cups so they would get a little bit more height. And hopefully kind like there's a bunch of them right there. And then back here in a couple holes, I did plant some sunflowers. I don't know if I'm going to get plants out of here or not. We'll have to see. I'm not sure. This will be a surprise. Hi! And here is the little girl. Where are you going? She's right here. This is Sydney. Are you coming out? Are you coming out? Where's your brother? Sydney's a little bit smaller. Come over here, London! They are very comfortable with me. And they're mostly comfortable with my kids. And that's about it for right now. Hey, honey, what are you doing? <laughs> Here comes her brother. Climbing the strawberries. Hey, what are you doing? Hi, come here. Come here. Come say hi to YouTube. Come say hi to YouTube. Tell them you are what I've been doing. You have been all my stuff. Uh oh, brother found her. Listen, they're super cute. And there are very few things that make you feel as happy as kittens. We can go. Where you can go? He's just obsessed with this baseball. Here she comes. Ooh. I love kittens.
So the front of the yard, I'd really hoped to do more with this. I wanted to pull this ring away from the tree. I've learned since after we did this, this is very bad for trees to pile up a ring close to it because it messes with the bark on the thing. You should make it lower and wider. So it's gonna make like a kidney shaped shade garden here. It has not happened. I've got some irises in here. This is this a stible coming back. And then right here are some cone flowers that I didn't plant here and an animal did. And I'm just letting them stay. In the buckets here, they're both the same. I have got my hydrangeas with a couple dahlias and some basil right now. I'm gonna end up buying some flowers to put in there. And then I've got the two planters up here, which I've just got some plants that need to go in there still. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. And then once you go this way, this corner, I've not done anything with yet or anywhere around the porch. Over here around the porch, I've meant to plant things in here, but the kittens kept getting stuck in my trellis. They're probably old enough that I'll come in and clean this out this week. My clematis is totally dead toward the bottom, old wood, but it's glowing, growing really good up here, but not quite flowering, lots of buds. I'm not sure how to make that look better. If I should just double some branches down and curl them back up like in a figure eight so it looks fuller. I don't know what to do. What are you doing up there? <sighs> so this will be the very first year that I get peonies and they are so close to being open because usually every year my husband mows them over in the spring or weed whips them but this year I put these blocks around them. There's one over there too. Now there's weeds everywhere but they did not get chopped down and the honeysuckle is looking a little worse for the wear. I haven't come in and cleaned, come in. I've not come in and cleaned this up yet and it has been attacked by aphids. So I will come through and clean this up this week, hose it down really good. Oh, it's looking really pretty over here, isn't it? Oh, you marvelous, aphids or not. Moving along on this side of the porch, same thing as the other side. The kittens come in and out here, so I've moved, pulled up my um, trellising and I need to plant in here yet. I had some flowers in here that they have knocked down. <laughs> so that's the price you pay, I suppose. I did have a really pretty poppy here that she has done. I think the kittens knocked her over too. These are all of my lilies that I have. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing, London? Hi, are you coming to see me? What up, little boy? Hi. Listen, there might be a lot of talking to cats in this video. I'm sorry. Um, over in here, I have got some yarrow up in that bucket. And this is that bush that I keep knocking down every year. I'm not exactly sure what I want the goal for this bush to be. But for now, I'm just going to let it stay like that. This is a painted daisy, it's a perennial that I planted last year that never flowered and it's coming back right there. And this is a black eyed Susan. I do have all these chicken and hen type succulents in here that I keep spreading around. This here is sweet woodruff and it makes all these little tiny flowers and it runs like mint. So it's great here for me because this is a ground cover and I want that there, but it's definitely not something you should put. You can see it's kind of taken over this way. I'll have to kind of clean that up and pull it back. Here's my columbine. I put pictures of that up and I've got irises that are done for the year already. The flocks are starting to flower and look at the rose bush. Listen, nothing does this justice. Like look how many flowers. They're just gorgeous. I will have to come in here and I don't know if you can see from this angle, but there are ones that are coming away from the house. I'm going to have them go straight up the house. Boucher your rose bush is lovely right now. Lovely. As are all the flowers in front of it. This right here is a perennial geranium. It only flowers in the spring. It's really pretty. I've got some dianthus here. These are columbine. I think this is called Rocky Mountain Blue Columbine. Really super pretty. My thyme is flowering and there's tiny little pollinators on it. Oh, it's so cute. My lupin didn't do great this year. It got kind of attacked by some aphids early in the year and 
it's doing okay, but not awesome. This is a kale from last year if it's flowering. It'll make seeds. I've got some parsley here, some dahlias back in there. These are some snapdragons that overwintered. And this right here is fever fuel. You're gonna see it's gonna explode pretty soon. What are you doing, London? <laughs> you are a garden kitty, man. Um, over here, I did plant some more parsley and I put some snapdragon seeds. Buddy, you are very much in the way. Um, and then this is oregano. This whole bush right here is oregano. <gasps> There's your sister, I see her, she's back there. Go get her. Again, more of this, and look at, look at these big bumbles. They love this geranium. And as we go along here, you're gonna see all kinds of snapdragons. These are from last year and they overwintered and they're actually flowering already. I have stuck a couple other things in here. There's a thyme in there. There's some strawberries in here, some coneflower. Look how pretty that is. That's the night and day snapdragon. That's gorgeous. Got a coneflower here and some basils, along with that Dara from last year, and apparently some of those. Right here I have got a clematis that I'm hoping will come up here and go up there. That is a giant weed. It's a mulberry tree trying to grow next to my house. I gotta go back there and do all that still. Same thing right here. These are all snapdragons that wintered over. Beautiful. Along this fence, these are all of the cone flowers, but this year, in between them, I'm planting tomatoes and I'm gonna single string them up this fence. So tomato there, more cone flowers, a couple tomatoes, cone flowers. Look how big and tall these snapdragons are. Don't those look fantastic? They're really pretty. More tomatoes. I've also planted in here, <laughs> You should not be in here. I gotta come in and weed. I've also planted in here sunflower seeds. So I will get some sunflowers. I have got some more tomatoes, some zinnias planted in here. I've got a random sunflower growing in the middle of my sidewalk. I should move it. Here's some volunteer sunflowers. Those are gonna look really good. A couple more tomatoes right here. And nothing's coming up right here. This is seeping out from the chicken coop. And I just might need to get some actual plants there. The seeds don't seem to be doing really well right there. This garden is about half planted. You can see I've got this kale going to seed here. There's some cone flowers in the corner. I've got some salvias planted on the side. Here's all my onions. The onions are all doing really, really, really well. I've got a couple potatoes in here. The bulk of what I have planted is along the trellises. So if we come up into here, you're gonna see peppers. My sweet peppers are all right here. My tomatoes are all right here. And then on this one, I have planted some melons that do not appear to be up yet. The rest of this is all weeds that I'm gonna need to take care of in the next week. I've got some baby zinnias coming up. I've got some Swiss chard, some sunflowers. And then these big mounds right here are decorative aliums. They're really, really pretty. And over here, I have got some garlics that I forgot to pick apparently. Oh, and look at my first squashes are coming up. I did plant one, two, three, about three to five summer squash here and on the other side too. Those just got planted though. And then this is the hydrangea from my Boucher's house that was growing in those back green stalks. It was getting too big. I had to transplant it. So it's doing okay here, but not awesome. This all obviously needs to be cleaned way out. So we're working on it. Oh look, the kittens and the dogs are having a meeting. What are those kittens doing? The kittens live on the porch and the dogs can see on the front porch when they're in the house. So there's been much barking. And there's my two dogs. Where are the kittens at? It's been a little bit of madness, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Here they are, they piled me up to the porch. Hey, would you like some snacks? I'll give you some snacks. Yeah? Hey. Oh, 
<laughs> I don't know if you can hear them purring on the video, but they purr so loud. But are you tired? It's hot out, isn't it? It's hot out for a garden kitty. Okay, I know that's not the best video I've ever shot, but the problem is that I keep shooting these and getting distracted like this is the third garden video i've probably shot and not posted <laughs> because i keep getting interrupted either by spring rain we've had some weird weather by kittens by kids by phone calls by meetings so i'm gonna put this up <laughs> exactly the way it is uh so everybody can see how the garden looks and so i can have a record of how the garden looks this first of june and hopefully within the next week or two, I will know for certain um, where I'm gonna be teaching in the fall. I will have my ducks in a row and we will be well and truly into summer vacation and I will be able to be back soon with more videos for you to check out. All right, have a great day and I will see you relatively soon.